Hey everybody! Thanks for joining in today. We're going to read the book that I have up on my screen right now, The Stars, A Journey Through Space. Um, and remember that when we are done reading the book and you are in your document that you can go ahead and go to the questions and type in the boxes to be able to answer them. Um, so the text we're going to be using today about the stars, we're going to be thinking about um, the main idea. And so our icons are, I can determine the main idea of a text. I can recount the key details and explain how they support the main idea. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to move myself to the middle so that I'm not in the way. And let's go. When you look at the night sky, you can see thousands of tiny dots of light. You cannot count them all. Some stars are so far away, we cannot even see them. Our sun is a star. Though the sun seems huge to us, there are many stars that are larger, brighter, and hotter. Those stars, however, are so far away, they seem small. The closest star after our sun is four light years away. That means the star's light takes four years to get to Earth. A star is a giant ball of gases held together by gravity. Gravity is the force that pulls objects together. Earth's gravity causes things to fall when you drop them. It also keeps us from floating into space. A star's gases burn, giving off heat, light, heat and light. Stars do not burn in the same way as a campfire does. A star's light comes from a process that is more like an explosion. Just like a burner on a stove, the color of a star can tell us how hot it is. The hottest stars are blue. Yellow stars are cooler than blue stars. Red stars are the coolest. Even the coolest stars are still very hot. The edge of a red star is about 6,500 degrees Fahrenheit. Wow. Or 3,593 degrees Celsius. Stars are hottest in their centers, or cores. Stars can be any size, from small to very large. Stars are grouped based on color, size, and temperature. Stars are born in clouds of dust and gas called nebulas. Gravity pulls apart, a gravity pulls part of the cloud together in a tight ball. The ball starts spinning and gets so hot that it begins to glow. The temperature and size of a star changes over time. A star can burn for millions of years or longer. When stars stop burning, they do not go out like a candle. Some stars blow up at the end of their lives. This is called a supernova. Stars form in groups called clusters. Some clusters have hundreds of stars, others have many thousands. Large groups of stars are called galaxies. A galaxy can have trillions of stars. Galaxies and clusters are held together by gravity. Earth is in the galaxy called the Milky Way. Sometimes when you look up at the night sky, you can see the stars grouped together in the Milky Way. They seem so close to each other that they blend together into a long band of light. The stars seem to move across that sky every night. It's not the stars, however, that are moving. It is Earth that rotates or spins on its axis. Earth's axis is an imaginary line that runs through the middle of the planet from its top to its bottom. Only one star appears to stay in the same place. That star is named Polaris, or the Pole Star, because it's above the North Pole at the tip of the Earth's axis. From Earth, we see different stars in the sky at different times of the year. This is because Earth orbits, or moves around, the Sun. Stars also move through space. They are so far away, however, it's difficult to see them move. And then on the next page, there's um, an activity for follow a star that you can do at home. In the past, people tried to find patterns in the stars. These patterns are called constellations. People from different times and places made up different constellations and gave them names. Spotting a constellation can be difficult. It's hard to know which stars to connect. Often it does not really look like a picture even after you connect the dots. The stars and constellations might look as though they are the same distance from Earth. They are not. Some stars are much closer to us than others. And then again on the other side of the page there's another activity here that you can do at home. 
The best time to star watch is on a night when the sky is clear. Try to get away from any lights. Lights on the ground can brighten up the sky, just like the sun does during the day. This can block out your view of starlight. All you need are your eyes, but a telescope can help you see the stars much better. This lets you get a closer look at the stars. Some, some stars can only be seen with a telescope. Safety rule, very important. Never look at the sun through a telescope or binoculars or even with your eyes. Direct sunlight will damage your eyes, very important. Sometimes you can see a light flash across the sky. This is called a shooting star. These are not actually stars, but pieces of rocks called meteors. When they enter Earth's atmosphere, they begin to burn up. This gives meteors their bright tails. Another sky object with a tail is a comet. Comets are big balls of ice that sometimes form a bright tail when they get close, to the, when they get close enough to the sun. A moving light without a tail is probably a satellite. Satellites are human-made objects that orbit Earth. These objects reflect light and can be seen and can seem to glow like stars. And that is technically the end of the book. So again, um, kind of cool. On a couple of the pages, there are activities here um, where you can watch the night sky. I want to get away from as many lights as possible. Another one right there. And then again, when you get done listening to this video, then you can go back to the questions and click in the boxes to answer them. Thanks for watching. See you again soon. Bye.